You think jealousy is hatred. That's not what it is all. Jealousy is desire. You cannot be jealous of someone or something that you don't truly desire. Jealousy is a clue. It's a directional signal. It's a dot on the map of your life. And the desire is blocked by fear or comparison or insecurity or stress or whatever. So instead of aiming that jealousy out at the world or at myself, aim it into inspiration, aim it into motivation, explore it, lean into it, give yourself permission to have that thing and then get off your ass and go make it happen. Inside of every man and woman is a fire and this fire burns very bright. And if you look at it this way, that your fire might burn just as bright as mine, but it burns at a different color, then, then you have to do what's right for you. Uh, you have to follow your own radiance in life. And when people tend to start living other people's dreams out, why is that? Because you are not living your radiance. You are not listening to your radiance. You are living someone else's dreams that they have for you. What you might be doing is running someone else's playbook for your life. And if you're running someone else's playbook for your life, then you are gonna feel incongruent with your radiance. If your fire is burning orange, but someone says, go do this blue thing, while you are doing something, it is not the thing that's gonna give you a sense of fulfillment and passion. And therefore you are dying a slow death. You are committing suicide at the slowest rate possible. Where does the switch come from? the overdrive. It is the thing that allows you to go the extra distance, to dig a little deeper, to push a little harder. It takes both emotion and logic to reach your maximum potential, to really give everything you have to go beyond your limits. Because emotion and logic will both reach their limitations. And when one fails, you need to rely on the other. When it just doesn't make any logical sense to go on, that's when you use your emotion, your anger, your frustration, your fear to push further, to push you to say one thing, I don't stop. When your feelings are screaming that you have had enough, when you think you are going to break emotionally, override that emotion with concrete logic and willpower that says one thing. I don't stop. Fight weak emotions with the power of logic. Fight the weakness of logic with the power of emotion. And in the balance of those two, you will find the strength to say to yourself, I don't stop. You can do what you put your mind to. And if you continue to put your mind to it, the game opens up new levels. In each new level that gets opened up, you're able to adapt a different mindset and a different approach. You can stop at that level or you can go, I want more levels. I want more fucking levels. Engage. Weakness is strong. I must be stronger. I must crush it into submission through force of will. So I savage the body. I push and pull and fight against gravity. I fight against fatigue and soreness and the weakness that says, give in. I will not give in. I will fight. If you want to live your best life, your absolutely best life, you got to give me a huge favor. You got to watch them choices you make. People make bad choices. They wake up another, make another bad choice. Then they make another bad choice. Now they got to have the bad choices, right? And they like, how did I get here? Choices? How did I get here? You trying to get to certain places, but you ain't making the choices that's going to get you there. You all in your feelings. If each day you do difficult things and make these daily optimizations, each day through the doing of micro difficulties, you build greater self-respect. And as you build greater self-respect, you fall in love with yourself. It's a great way to build self-love. I mean, one of the tactics to remember is how do you grow self-love? You consistently make and then keep self-promises. 
It's in your adversity. The thing that comes out of you is what defines you. When life is squeezing you and pressure is on you, what's really inside of you? See, there's some people in this room right now that you need to hear this loud and clear. You need to get this in your spirit because I don't know what you're walking through, but some of you right now, you are in a tough season. An event has happened and something's happened and maybe you have failed, but I want to remind you that failure is not final, it's formative. It is part of the process. It's part of the journey. Your failure matters as much as your success. How do you think you're gonna grow if you don't ever fail? Yet some of you have failed and you have decided, well, guess what, I'm a failure. No, failure is an event. It is never a person. Just because you failed doesn't mean that you're a failure. In fact, failure is actually fuel for your future. The way that you grow, the way that you advance. You have to fail in order to succeed. The darker the night, the brighter the morning. This too shall pass. You're going to get through this thing. The problem is that most people, they like, they can't get up in the morning. They ain't got no energy. They don't got the energy to keep up with me. I'm like, boo, ain't nothing wrong with you. You just ain't got the stamina. You just ain't got the energy. You can't smart everything. You can't outthink everything. Some stuff is just, you got to be powerful. It's just some stuff that you got to have stamina for. You just too slow. It just take you too long. You wake up, take you three weeks to do what it can take 24 hours to do. It don't make you a bad person, but you're going to forever be average because to be great, you got to keep up. No alarm clock needed. My passion wakes me up. My drive wakes me up. My determination wakes me up. My ability to be, do, and act whatever I want, it wakes me up. What wakes you up? What drives you? Why are you playing this game? You got to begin with the end in mind. So whatever your dream or your goal is, you got to wake up every day to it. A young person often asks, why am I here? The answer is, you are here to serve. Your part of the bargain is to so marshal your unique resources as to do the best possible job of serving others. And you will always serve best doing that which you most enjoy. That which best fits your unique talents and abilities. The next question usually goes, well, that's all fine, but what do I get out of it? And the answer to that, of course, those your rewards all the years of your life will match the extent and quality of your service. Now, if you happen to want a three, zero a week income, or enjoy flying your own jet and driving expensive cars, you've got to serve in an uncommon way. Now, how you do it is for you to solve. And this is the challenge that can make life so interesting, so exasperating and baffling. We have to make up our minds as to what's important to us. Now, Dr. Einstein wanted nothing more than the simple necessities of life. A roof, a bed, food, a place to work, his violin, and his sailboat. The modern trappings of success meant nothing to him. He was simply above them. He was often mistaken for an unsuccessful traveling salesman. But his service to mankind was monumental, and his reward, immortality. He could have had anything of a material nature he wanted. He wanted nothing. He was a completely mature human being. But he had not selected his own great gifts. His abilities, like ours, had come as his unique genetic heritage. He simply put them to the best use he could, while at the same time developing a mature and rich overview of mankind. I think we should do the same, and that our kids should know, when they're old enough to know, that they should do the same. Make the best use of their gifts, and by so doing, maximize their service. And, by so doing, maximize their rewards. It all fits. It makes sense whether you're interested in giving, getting, or both. Few of us have matured or become so wrapped up in one subject to the degree reached by Dr. Einstein. Most of us are much concerned with this world and how we can enjoy it as we go along. We tend to like beautiful things and the perquisites of success. Perhaps we're still children to that extent, but it's fun being a child and harmless. We seem to like such things as beautiful homes, cars, furs, jewels, yachts, and travel, at least until after we've had them for a while. But forgetting for the moment what we may want, the important thing is to find how we can best serve. It answers the question, why am I here? I am here to serve others. Now I know why I get up in the morning and what I should spend a good proportion of my day doing. 
maximizing, if I can, my service to those I have chosen to serve, how can I do a better job at serving today than I did yesterday? As long as I can keep answering that question, I will continue to grow and mature as a person, and I'll never grow old in mind and spirit. It clarifies our lives. As Voltaire's candid said, let us cultivate our garden. Let's make it a good garden. The best garden we can produce with the equipment and conditions we've been given within the enormous parameters offered by the world of today and tomorrow. Mediocrity is everywhere right now. And we're always trying to find an easy way out. And we're judging ourselves. Let's say there's 10 people in this room and we're all mediocre. I'm the best of the mediocre people. I now think I'm great. We surround ourselves around people that make us feel great. They tell us what we want to hear. The second we put ourselves amongst the uncommon people, we don't like that feeling, that challenging feeling of that person who's waking up at 3, 30 in the morning and saying, hey, put your shit on, we're going for a run. We don't like that challenge. We like that person who says, hey, you know what, man? I don't feel good today, man. And they say, oh, it's okay, brother. Let's take a day off. Maybe we'll get a pizza and watch the game. We like that. We, we love that feeling. Why? Because you understand, man, we're good, bro. We don't want that like this. Hey, man. No, bro. Get your shit on, man. Stop being a punk. We don't want that in our lives. We don't want that person who's constantly challenging our weaknesses. We want that person who's constantly, you know, making us feel nice and good and secure in us. That's the mediocrity of life. We want to be the best amongst the average people. People wonder, how do you stay hungry all the time? Because after I accomplish something, I don't sit back like a lot of guys who graduate buzz. Graduate this, graduate that, they get comfortable. They wonder why I'm getting weak, man. I don't know. I lost my edge. What's going on? Because once you hit the top of the mountain, guess what happened? I'm good. So you wonder why you're falling down now. Because once we top of the mountain, you got another one. That's mediocrity. There's a lot of people in mediocrity who have a nice resume. But they're one-timers, man. They hit, they hit a one-time deal. They busted it open. Got a lot of money. But they're good. You're mediocre now, man. What are you doing today, tomorrow, the next day? That's why I don't listen to theorists. I don't listen to all that bullshit. I listen to them. Who's like this, man? What's wrong, man? I'm tired, dude. Why are you tired? Because tomorrow, I got to do it again, man. Whenever it is that made me nauseous and sick to my stomach, it made me hurt. There's no ending. And that's the person I listen to. That's the person who's gained knowledge. You gain knowledge through suffering, and on the other end of suffering is a world that very few, very few have ever seen. It's a beautiful world because that's where you find yourself. You don't find yourself in over here. You find yourself on the other end, like, like the 100 mile race I was on. I ran it for 24 hours. I found myself on the other end of that race. That 19 hours I found, wow, there's a whole another world out here that I've never even saw. The world is in your mind. And that's what all that mediocrity is about. Mediocrity is contagious.